Welcome back. A uh, series of lectures here on the first half of Western Civilization. Uh, this is History 1121. Uh, we're going to spend some time with the Roman Empire. This is obviously a, just an immense subject. You could spend an entire semester talking about Rome. Uh, so in a survey class, what we have to do is make some uh, critical decisions about what to include and then what to leave out. So what I want to do is talk about uh, significances, uh, sort of the big general conclusions or significances of the Roman Empire. We'll spend a couple of minutes talking about origins. Uh, we're going to talk about slavery. We're going to talk about uh, women a bit, uh, trade, cities, uh, just a, a variety of topics. And we'll just touch briefly on each one. And hopefully by the end of this, you'll have some sense uh, of Rome and its importance. Uh, the context uh, is the Roman Empire. The, Rome, the Roman Empire and the history of Rome is so big, it is its own context. Uh, significances, we have a few. Uh, probably the most significant thing about the Roman Empire is that it unified the Mediterranean world, uh, brought a sense of unity uh, to uh, just a tremendous, uh, tremendously large geographic area that I suppose at its height stretched from the British Isles all the way to Mesopotamia. Uh, to uh, the rim of North Africa, up the Nile Valley, uh, into Central Europe. Um, just an immensely large area unified under Roman rule. A second significance, uh, the creation of the Roman Republic. Politics conducted in public among the masses. Uh, this is something we, uh, we still hearken back to today here in the United States. Um, the rise of Rome also marks a shift in shift of gravity, or uh, the shift of uh, of the axis of human activity further westward uh, from, let's say, Mesopotamia or uh, the ancient uh, the Middle East into the Mediterranean and uh, further further westward. Of course, this will happen again uh, in the 15th century, uh, beginning with Columbus, uh, where that center of gravity or that axis of activity will shift all the way to the Atlantic Rim. Uh, as the age of exploration begins. Of course, the Romans developed the most powerful uh, military institutions of the ancient world, the Roman legions. Uh, the, Romans, the Romans built an extensive network of roads that connected and linked the empire together. Uh, many of these roads uh, still used today or form the original path of roads built over them. Of course, the Romans were also um, uh, lent their engineering skills to uh, to these uh, fabulous uh, aqueducts uh, to bring fresh water into these urban areas. This is interesting. Lands that were once that were once Roman are today divided among 40 different countries. That's pretty remarkable. From the Atlantic to the Euphrates, from the Sahara to Scotland. Of course, Rome is also significant because of the legacy of its laws, its law codes. Uh, which still underlies many Western-inspired legal systems. And of course, we have the Romance languages. Uh, languages derived from Latin, uh, French, Spanish, Romanian, Portuguese, Italian. Uh, these languages are still spoken uh, all around the world. Uh, Roman cities lie beneath uh, modern-day cities. Uh, it's not unusual for archaeologists to dig down and discover uh, the remains of ancient Roman cities and even cities older than the Roman cities sometimes. And then of course the state religion of the, uh, the ancient Roman world, uh, at least after Constantine in the fourth century, is Christianity. So think about how Rome has unified this vast area of, um, of Eurasia on its western edge around the Mediterranean. Uh, and then this, this allows a very fertile ground for, uh, for Christianity to grow as it becomes the faith of the empire. And of course, uh, the Rome, Rome itself, the imperial city, becomes the, uh, the center of the Christian faith, uh, the holy city. And of course, the idea of Rome has sort of haunted the imagination of of Europeans for centuries, hearkening back to this great unification, one empire, one god, one emperor, uh, Napoleon, uh, Charlemagne, who we'll talk about, uh, even Mussolini in the 20th century, 
uh, sort of hearkening back to this, this, this notion of grand, the grandeur that is Rome. Uh, I want to take a few moments, moments here and talk about uh, some of the origins of, the, of, of Rome. Uh, the tra traditional founding is 509 before the Common Era. Uh, the mythology, of course, you may be familiar with, Romulus and Remus, the twins, uh, feral children uh, raised by a she-wolf. Of course, Romulus will kill his brother uh, Remus in time. Uh, this harkens back to Cain and Abel story. Um, Rome emerged in, in an area of the Italian peninsula uh, ruled by the Etruscans. Uh, once the Etruscans are expelled from Rome, uh, then the Roman Republic will begin. And of course, some of this is steeped in mythology. Uh, an early uh, leader here in Rome, uh, a man named Servius, and he did something that was uh, important in the long run. He had great organizational skills. He conducted the first census. Uh, this allowed the Roman government to create categories uh, classes, prestige, how to assign taxes, how to uh, expropriate military service from the people. Um, this early republic has a sense of civil, uh, civil rights and civil obligations of service, uh, a say, people have a say in how their city is run. Uh, the early assemblies called the Senate, this is uh, led by uh, men of, of wisdom and experience. Of course, legions are going to be created to defend the empire and then to expand it. So the census was key in, in sort of bringing rationality uh, to the early Roman Republic. Another uh, part history, part legend, part myth uh, dealing with the origins of Rome, the, uh, the ousting of the Etruscans goes back to the uh, Lucretia, the story of Lucretia. She was a model Roman wife, uh, raped by an Etruscan king. Uh, she kills herself in shame, uh, having brought uh, dishonor upon the family. Uh, the Romans attack the Etruscans in response to this crime and uh, oust them from the city and begin to govern themselves. So again, uh, a republic means uh, a public affair, something that takes place in public. So that is a government that's open uh, for participation from its peoples. Uh, we like consuls, uh, executives, generally two, uh, so they can, uh, again, the power spread very thinly here. And you can see our own founders uh, the, of the American Republic harken back to this, this dispersal of political power. Uh, the Federalist Papers. Uh, for those of you who've had U.S. history, you may remember uh, Alexander Hamilton and John Jay and James Madison wrote these series of uh, sort of high-level propaganda arguing for uh, ratification of the new Constitution, and they took the name uh, Publius, who was an ancient Roman who uh, dealt with law codes and civic honor. So our founders hearkened back to these ancient Roman ideas of a government conducted in public, a republic that is. I want to make just a, uh, a couple of remarks here about women, about morals uh, in the Roman society. Uh, women are biologically, legally, morally inferior to men, uh, controlled by men, uh, both legally and financially. Uh, Rome is a, uh, is a society of, uh, of hierarchy of distinct classes. Uh, my statistics say that one in three persons uh, was a slave by the beginning of the Roman Empire. And we'll talk about that transition from the Republic to the Empire. Um, regarding public morals, probably the most famous uh, case here would be uh, the Emperor Augustus uh, attempted moral reform uh, in 19 before the Common Era. Uh, a series of laws that outlawed um, Adultery, for instance, made it a capital offense. Uh, ironically, Augustus' own daughter, Julia, uh, was exiled for violating her father's moral codes. Uh, I could also recommend to you uh, a book uh, called The Art of Love. This is by Ovid. Um, it's sort of a treatise uh, explaining to young men how to seduce women 
It's, uh, it's a lot of fun to read. You can Google it. Just Google Ovid, The Art of Love. It'll pop up. Uh, at any rate, Ovid is exiled uh, for promoting licentious behavior. Again, uh, these reforms by Augustus were very unpopular and uh, impossible to enforce. Uh, I have one quote here uh, regarding these reforms. Quote, now the country suffers from its laws as it once suffered from its vices. Uh, so you can see that it's difficult to enforce laws that uh, the vast majority of the people have no respect for. So that's a, uh, just an introduction uh, to Rome, uh, our first lecture. Uh, we'll pick it up next time. We'll talk about um, the gladiatorial games and slavery, cities, trade, things like that. So I'll see you next time. Thank you.